What is the largest number you've counted to? 100, 400, 1,000? 1,000 is pretty big. But what if we wanted to find a giant? Let's go giant hunting. We'll start with that old favorite, one. We can just count up from one and eventually we'll reach something really big. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hmm, this isn't very quick. Sure, we could reach something gargantuan eventually, but we would be counting for a very long time. Let's see if there's a fast way to do this. If we add a number to itself, we can grow it much quicker. This is called multiplication. Let's go from two and use multiplication by two instead of counting by one. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. This is better, but we can go bigger. If rather than multiplying a number by two, we multiply it by itself, we can grow even faster. 2 times 2 is 4, times 4 is 16, times 16 is 256, times 256 is 65,536. What if we multiply a number by itself multiple times? Turning that 2 into a 3 turns it to 2 times 2 times 2 makes 8. This is called raising a number to a power. This is even better because now we don't actually need to raise the number itself. We just raise the power. Let's use 10. 10 to the power of 2 already gets us to 100, but let's keep going. 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. 10 to the power of 6 gets us up to 1 million. These numbers are already very, very hard for a human to comprehend, but let's go higher. 10 to the power of 9 is 1 billion. 10 to the power of 12 is 1 trillion. 10 to the power of 15 is a quadrillion. 10 to the power of 18 is a quintillion. 10 to the power of 30 is called a nonillion. 10 to the power of 80 is roughly the amount of particles in the observable universe, but maths doesn't care. Let's go larger. 10 to the power of 100, which is the same as one followed by 100 zeros, is a Google. What if we raise 10 to the power of a Google? 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100 the legendary Googleplex, our first real giant, which can be written as a one followed by one Google zeros. Hmm, this is good, but after a while, all these 10 to the power numbers can start to blend into each other. What we really need is a way to grow the way that we are growing. Let's try this. Take two to the power of two. What if we add another to the power of two here? Two to the power of two to the power of two. We could add another. 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. What if we have a number to increase the amount of powers we have? Tetration. The tetration number controls the height of a number's power tower. 2 tetrated to 5 is 2 to the power of 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 2. This is very good. But what if we wanted to tetrate a number's tetration? We can build the tetration tower just as we built the power tower. We've reached hyper operations. The next hyper operation is a pentation, which controls the height of the tetration tower and is written with three up arrows. Hexation is another up arrow and another layer of maths we can do. Let's find a new giant. Start with three hexated to three. This number by itself is already far beyond human comprehension. It's so large that it would be nigh impossible to write with regular numbers or even powers. Call this number G0 and then raise 3 to the hyper operation of G0. That is to say, put a 3, then G0 arrows, then another 3. Call the resultant number G1. Repeat this process with G1 to get G2. You see the pattern. 3 raised to the hyper operation G2 yields G3. This number grows and grows. Repeat until you reach G63, then do it one more time. 3 raised to the hyper operation of G63 gives us G64. Graham's number. Graham's number was, at the time of its imagination, the biggest number to ever be used in a mathematical proof. We could even do more with Graham's number if you wanted. Graham's number times two, Graham's number squared, Graham's number tetrated, Graham's number hyperoperated to Graham's number. 
but this is getting a little bit out of hand. So let's calm down by drawing some lovely pictures of trees. Because this is a maths video though, let's make some mathematical rules. Let's say that we can draw trees by connecting different colored dots, and that we can't have more dots than the number of trees we've made plus one. So the first tree can't have more than one dot, the second can't have more than two, and so on. Another rule we can make is that no tree can contain previous trees. If we made this tree, we couldn't make this one because it contains the first tree. If we want, we can make a function called tree, which tells us how many trees we can make with a set number of colors. Let's see what different numbers of colors give us. For tree one, we can draw a single dot and then no more, since any other trees would contain this dot. With two colors, tree two, we can make three whole trees, but no more. How many trees do you think we can make with three colors? Five? Twelve? No. Tree three is much bigger. Tree three is so unimaginably large, in fact, that it completely dwarfs every other number seen in this video so far. A new giant. Tree four dwarfs tree three to an even greater extent than tree three dwarfed Graham's number, and we can keep growing trees. Tree 10, tree Google, tree Graham's number, tree, tree, tree three. The tree of three is the entryway to some of the vastest numbers ever imagined. These numbers are so large that they've lost all meaning. Humans were not meant to speak to giants. They are too big, too vast. No matter how hard you tried, you could never truly grasp any of these numbers. You could never truly grasp the tree of three. You could never grasp Graham's number or a Google. You could most likely never even grasp something like one million. We cannot meet giants, but we may glimpse them on the horizon and bask in their radiance.